one of my lights is not on. Ding! Ah, now you can see me, sort of. It is what it is. Hi everybody, welcome back. It's Justy. At this point in my life, I've been doing Lolita fashion for a little while now. Definitely not like the longest person on the planet, obviously. There are people older than me, people who said it before me, but I have been doing it for a while and I'm pretty confident about it. You know, we all have our days. <laughs> and I find every once in a while I still get comments like, oh, I wish I could start in Lolita, or I'd love to do Lolita, or things of that nature. So I thought today I would pass down my worldly wisdom to you. So here is my beginner's guide to Lolita. We are gonna get detailed. I'm gonna talk about many, many things. And if I miss anything, Please feel free to leave a comment below. I'd be happy to still answer the question. I'm hoping I touch on everything, but there's, there's a lot of stuff out there. Now I will say right now, I do not think I am the be all end all Lolita fashion expert. I have never claimed that. I will never claim that. And are there people who maybe know a little bit better than me? Oh, for sure, you know, for sure. But I do have a pretty good base of knowledge and I think that could be really helpful to people. So. We're just gonna go for it. We're gonna start with the pre-Lolita, the not owning any clothing, thinking about it, dreaming about it, advice, all the way till, I guess, kind of about now <laughs> is how this is gonna work. My first tip is for when you're starting out, thinking about joining Lolita, looking at it, you know, planning if you're gonna start buying. And the first stop is to do a lot of research. And I know. Research is not always fun. I get it. But with this research, you do get to stare at very beautiful dresses and such, which I mean, is a nice little comfort. <laughs> As we all know, Lolita can be a very expensive fashion. It's not kind of something you can just go to your local mall and pick up a new dress for $20. It's not really how it works. So I recommend every new Lolita do a really healthy amount of research before making any of their first purchases because it is going to probably be a decent amount of money, especially depending on if you decide you wanna go right for a big brand name. Look into what all the different sub styles are and what some of the components you need for each one. Find out what your favorite is, that's really important. You don't wanna start buying punk Lolita and realize you absolutely hate punk clothing would kind of be an issue. <laughs> Look into where you wanna make your first purchase. Are you someone who wants to stick to brand names? Look up those brand websites and find out how much their dresses are. Are you someone who would be more happy starting with a second hand? Where are you gonna buy your second hand? We're gonna talk about more websites later. This is just a general overview. Are you gonna start looking into Taobao? Do you know every single component of a Lolita coordinate that you need? The head bow, the shoes, the dress, the, the petticoat, the bloomers, those are the things you see underneath and don't always immediately think of because they're not right away in the picture. Lolita has been around for a very, very, very long time and, and at this point there's like a million different resources you can Google that'll tell you about coordinates and where to buy things. So I would definitely start there. Figure out what you like before you launch in because the worst is buying a dress simply to have a dress and then realizing later on that you actually kind of hate it and don't ever want to wear it. So definitely put the time in. It is worth it for a fashion like this. I don't recommend just jumping in without knowing anything at all. My second tip would be to stick to a sub style. I mentioned in the first one to look up all the different sub styles and figure out which one you like. And that may end up being more than one, which is totally fine and totally normal. I have multiple sub styles in my wardrobe. But I do personally recommend when you're starting out to stick to one sub style. You don't have to do this, obviously. You don't have to do any of the advice I'm giving today. It's your life, make your choices. But it makes it a lot harder to create complete coordinates from the beginning if you are jumping all around to the different substyles. And I have very first hand experience with this. My first coordinate that I bought was very, very sweet, 100% sweet, love it, still love that outfit. And that was it, I had one full outfit. And then the next dress that I decided I wanted to purchase was very much not sweet, it was from Alice in the Pirates, it was my Peter Pan dress. Uh, so, and I bought that and I don't regret it, but 
nothing I owned matched that dress. So I now had the one coordinate I started with and one dress that at this point I couldn't use. And again, these are very expensive, so it's not like I can just go out and buy a whole bunch of things to match it right away. So I started collecting up some pieces to go with that dress. While doing that, that meant that I didn't have a complete coordinate for the second dress and I was buying pieces to match it instead of the first dress, so I couldn't, I didn't have new ways to wear that first dress. I had to kind of wear it the same way a couple times in a row because I had nothing else, <laughs> which is fine. I didn't mind. But if you're looking to diversify and have different things to wear and, and try to coordinate, it's really, really impossible to do unless you spend like a bajillion dollars and buy like five coordinates and a bunch of extras all right away. You will, you'll take a lot longer to build up a, a sizable wardrobe with different outfits. It took me years to get to the place where I am where I have several full coordinates of different styles and it was a pain in the butt to get there, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> when you're starting, pick one substyle, the one you like best, I would recommend. You can also go with the one that's the easiest to buy stuff for if you want. I recommend sticking with what you really, really love, even if it's a little more difficult because everything is doable and at least then you'll be like obsessed with what you're buying. When you've maybe gotten a couple coordinates and a bunch of little extras you can mix in, if there's another substyle that you really, really love and you absolutely have to have, that's when I would start going for it. Because at that point, you've got a few outfits you can wear, you can start building up another outfit, you'll probably have more overlap between the two different substyles because you've got different outfits. It'll just be, I think, a nicer experience because I did sometimes get frustrated that I couldn't wear a dress I'd bought because I didn't have any accessories because I was buying darker accessories for a different dress. It just, it can get very annoying. So, stick to one substyle. Number three figure out where you're gonna buy from. I briefly mentioned how there's all sorts of different websites you can buy from, and I would plan out where, and if possible, what you're gonna buy before you actually make the purchase, if that kind of makes sense. I'll explain more. So, for example, do you wanna buy big brand right away? Have you decided that you want only brand in your wardrobe, which lots of people do? So, are you gonna buy from Angelic Pretty? Are you gonna buy from Baby? Are you gonna buy from uh, Meta? Pick what you like, depending on the substyle you've selected, and start looking at how much their dresses are. I would base what you're gonna save or prepare to spend based on their regular prices, not what you see in the sale bin. You never know if that sale is going to expire or if they're going to sell out and then you'll have to buy something else. You may get lucky and your item may be on sale when you go to buy it, but likelihood it will be full price. So plan to pay full price. Is that gonna be $300? Is that gonna be $400? Are you gonna want the extras that go with the dress? Which I recommend, but we're gonna talk to, about that later. Plan all of that out. Other options are the secondhand market. You can find secondhand sales on Facebook or Lace Market, which is one of the most popular secondhand and the one that I use most frequently, honestly, for buying secondhand Lolita. There are always risks involved with buying secondhand. Generally, most people on Lace Market are very good about disclosing if there are, you know, issues or tears, stains, smells. It, it is, I would say, 90% a really good base of people. I've bought lots off Lace Market and personally, I've had no issues, no smells, no stains, no rips, nothing like that. There are people who have had a few horror stories, so again, just make sure you're paying attention. If there aren't a lot of photos, maybe ask for some more photos, whatever you need to feel comfortable. But that's a really, really good secondhand place to buy. Obviously, you have a higher chance of things selling out before you get to them on Lace Market because there's usually only one of each. So if you're gonna do that, I would plan to start with a brand and not a specific dress. So perhaps you really do wanna do Angelic Pretty. Look through the Angelic Pretty tag, look at what's there, look at the range of prices, plan to save up to that much money and then wait for a dress you really, really love on Angelic Pretty. The next option is, of course, Taobao, which is one of my favorite options, personally. Now, as everybody knows, you can't buy direct off Taobao unless you're in China. So if you're going to use Taobao, you're either going to need a shopping service or you are going to need a reseller website. You can find li huge lists of Taobao resellers all over the place. Some Lolitas have talked about them in YouTube videos, you can find those. There are Google Docs, you can literally Google it. I think there's still a Tumblr page that has their list up if you Google it. 
I don't recommend just searching Lolita fashion on Taobao. Um, that's what I did at first. and it's, It could go very wrong. It's kind of like just searching eBay for that. So I recommend finding these lists and choosing a brand on there that you really like. I have a whole video about a bunch of indie Taobao brands that I really, really love. Those are some good place to start. Or you can just click through one of these lists and, and look at all the different dresses and find something you love. Obviously there's a wide range of quality for these stores on Taobao, so pay attention to how much you're paying. Uh, obviously a $20 dress is not gonna be the same quality as a $60, $70 dress. Some of those you can find on Taobao. You can find YouTube videos doing unboxings and reviews for some of the Taobao brands if it's not a, a big familiar one. There are loads and loads of options and some of them are phenomenal. I love Infanta, it's a Taobao brand. I'll buy from them like anytime. You've got your list, you've picked out maybe a brand you wanna buy from. Now you need to do how. The shopping service that I use is Yoibai. And I have been using that since I started buying on Taobao. I've been very successful with it. They're very helpful, pretty communicative. I find their fees and markups are not uh, outrageous. Obviously there is gonna be a, a fee because they have to make money for what they're doing. So that's fine. There are lots of other Taobao um, buyers as well that you can use. I haven't used them myself though, so I won't recommend them, but there are lots of Lolitas who talk about what they use. You can try different ones, but I, I found your boy, I was comfortable, and I've stuck there since. To use uh, one of these shopping services, I'm gonna use how Yoibai works, because they're all pretty similar within range. Um, basically, I put a link to the item that I wanna buy in Yoibai, which then gives me all the, the buttons I can click for size, color, blah, 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 how many I want. That goes to a cart. The cart then has the cost of the item. It is in US dollars and you pay for the item. And if the item has a small shipping fee, which sometimes they do, it's usually like a dollar to $2 max. You pay that shipping fee to get it to the UI warehouse. It comes in, they, they open it up. If you have multiples, they'll put it all in one package for you. And then you pay to have it shipped to you. And that can range, you know, depending on how many items you have, how much it weighs, that type of stuff. Taobao and, and shopping services do work best if you're buying um, larger amounts at once. Obviously, you don't have to get obscene. I'm not saying go out and spend $600 on Yoibai. <laughs> but because you are paying these multiple shippings and it can take a while to get to you, it, it does work out more in your favor if you kind of have a, a, a bigger package. You know, maybe you like the dress from one seller, but nothing else. Take a look at a couple other sellers. Maybe you'll like some socks, maybe you'll like a little blouse. Put a few things together, get that all shipped out to you, and that'll be more cost effective in the long run, and still likely less than paying for a band, brand dress, which is kind of the whole point of using um, Taobao and stuff like that. If you don't wanna figure out all of the shopping service, you don't wanna pay for the double shipping, you're not comfortable searching through the Taobao store list to find one you like to use, you just wanna make it really easy, wanna be able to search red blouse, pink head bow, whatever, 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 there are resellers. There are several options for resellers and I've tried a whole bunch. There is Devil Inspired, which is one that kind of everybody knows the most. Uh, My Lolita Dress, which is where I bought my first um, dress off of. Uh, Lolita Wardrobe. Um, there's a few others. All of these are Taobao resellers. And what they do is they buy off um, Taobao, obviously. Uh, and there's a bit of a markup so that they make money and then they ship it to you and you can search through all these different um, Taobao stores on one website instead of having to go through Taobao, having to deal with um, the Chinese to English translation and having to deal with a third party shopping service. I least of all recommend Devil Inspired, personally. I have used it. Uh, their markups are the highest, I would say sometimes obscenely high. And I respect, again, that these companies do have to make money and I don't blame a markup. I just think that theirs is kind of the worst. It seems a little too high. I also don't like that they don't give a link back to the original seller. Most of these other ones do. And I like that just so I can see what the price on that website would be. Um, as well, I like to just check out what else is within that brand because I might wanna get more to match and I just, I like the access, I like the original. The original also sometimes has more photos than the resellers putting on their site. So I like that access. I, I It makes me a little suspect that Devil Inspired doesn't 
put it up. I personally quite like Lolita Wardrobe. I've had great success with that. I found the markup not too, too high um, without it being also obscenely low that nobody's making any money. Um, so that's kind of one of my big recommendations as well as my Lolita wardrobe. As you progress in Lolita, you also find what works best for you. Maybe you hate using Taobao all the time and the cost difference isn't really that worth it to you. So you stick to maybe lace market and resellers. Again, maybe you want to buy only brand, but only brand new brand. You don't want to buy the um, used on lace market or Facebook groups, whatever, whatever. You're going to figure out what's best for you and what you like. I love a mix of everything personally. I am all over the place. I've talked about this with the sub styles. I, I want everything. And as much as I love obviously angelic pretty dresses and baby dresses, I think they put out beautiful stuff. You know, they don't put out everything. I would not have my Sleeping Beauty skirt if I only bought from big brands. You know, I would not have my Pride and Prejudice dress if I only bought from big brands. So. Just keep in mind there is lots and lots out there and you'll slowly learn what you love as you go. It's time to buy your first dress slash possibly coordinate. As best you can, depending on what you've picked, try and plan out a full coordinate around what you're gonna buy. Obviously things like lace market are gonna be a little harder because you don't want things to sell out before you can get them. But there is usually a bit of a, a, a grace period, especially for some of the like less big prints. My example for this, hopefully this makes it understandable. I decided I was gonna buy an Infanta JSK, the Sleeping Bears one that I have. I told you my very first dress and that came with the head bow. So I knew that that's what I was gonna get. It was on uh, my Lolita dress. I didn't think it was gonna sell out right away. So I had some time to get the money and think about what else I wanted. I decided to use Lace Market for all other parts of my coordinate for this first one. Simply, oh, except for the shoes. The shoes came from Taobao. I knew I needed to plan for this coordinate. I'm getting lost, this is crazy. So I went to Lace Market and I started searching items one by one. I decided to start with a white blouse because it would work, it was easy, and it would likely work with future coordinates as well. So I just kind of searched white blouse and I looked through for something that wasn't too expensive, uh, wasn't stained, wasn't damaged, etc, etc, etc. Found something I liked and I was like, great, this will work with the coordinate. Next I need socks. So I searched a specific color of socks that I thought would work with the outfit. Went through all of those, found a pair that again was not too expensive and not damaged. You know, I looked for a bag because I knew I needed a bag. So I planned out everything that would go along with my coordinates so that right away I had my one full coordinate that when everything arrived, something to wear. So think ahead. What are you going to need? Are you getting an OP or a JSK? Are you going to need a blouse? Does the item you're buying come with a set head bow or are you going to need to buy a separate one right away? What socks are you going to wear? Are you a tights or a socks person? Do you want flat shoes, little heeled shoes? Are you going to buy brand shoes or uh, Taobao off-brand shoes? Whatever, whatever. All these things. Maybe make a little list for yourself. It doesn't even have to be an exact item, let's say maybe the perfect blue socks haven't come up on, on Lace Market, at least write down, you say, you know, that you want a pair of blue socks or what if blue doesn't work out? Would red work with your coordinate? Would pink work with your coordinate? Write down second options just in case. Have a bit of a plan going into this. It means you won't spend as much money on things that you perhaps don't need or are not going to use right away. Save you some money for the future, which is nice. And it means you don't miss anything for your coordinate because there's nothing more annoying than going to wear something and realizing oh I I didn't get a bag or I didn't get anything for my hair or I don't have any jewelry etc etc it's really gonna save your butt in the long run and once you get used to planning you don't have to write it down every single time I know for the most part what I need for my outfits because I need kind of the same stuff all the time and I just constantly have that going in my brain if I'm buying new outfits or if I'm buying accessories for outfits, whatever, whatever. But it's a really good habit to get into right at the start and then you'll have it for your entire Lolita career. If you have larger size feet, much like me, my tip is to avoid brand shoes. They're tiny. They can be very annoying when you're starting out. I'm not saying you have to avoid them forever, there are ways to do it, and I know a lot of people do, but I think if you're going after brand shoes right away, 
you're going to get quite frustrated and you're going to spend a lot of time fighting with trying to get a size that you don't need to spend. Taobao shoes are phenomenal. Uh, all of my shoes are either Taobao or off-brand because I have large feet and it is just not worth it to me to pay the amount of money that brand shoes are for something that is really risky if it'll fit me or not. Um, it's just not worth it. I know some people like it's important to them that they're head to toe brand and I respect that. I don't care. <laughs> so that's my personal recommendation. If you really, really, really want the brand shoes, go ahead and fight for them. It's not going to be super easy but it can be done. If uh, you're okay to have everything else brand and maybe just not your shoes, I recommend going elsewhere. I personally always buy new shoes. I don't love used shoes, that's just me. You've got your dresses. You've got your accessories. You're, you've made a full cord. You're ready to go. What do you do now? Let's talk about required things for Lolita because I find this one often holds people up and, and makes them think they can't do Lolita when a lot of it is not relevant. Lolita is very much about the shape. You do need kind of the cupcake or poofy bottom because it can be A-line, doesn't necessarily need to be cupcake. But the poofy bottom, generally you need something kind of up in your head to balance that out. It doesn't have to be a head bow, it can be a cute hand, it can be decorative flowers, whatever, whatever, that is not a, a need, but there should be something up there. You generally want to have it a certain length, mini skirts, not exactly Lolita, also very impossible to like get a pretty coat up there, but they can still be used. People do amazing layering things, so even that is not off the table. Really, it's that puffy shape. That's the biggest thing with Lolita. Now you notice there's lots of stuff I didn't list in there. You don't have to wear wigs to wear Lolita. You can if you want to. I do sometimes to help balance colors or if I'm just not liking what my natural hair is doing that day. But you don't have to. You could even have like short shaved hair if you wanted. It might be hard to achieve the exact balance that a lot of coordinates have, but it's absolutely doable. You don't have to wear circle lenses to wear Lolita. You can just have your natural, lovely eyes, no need to cover them, no need to make them big giant circles. You are still a Lolita if you wear your natural eyes. You don't have to wear lashes to do Lolita look. I am not wearing them today. I'm often not wearing them. Sometimes I do when I'm in the mood. I just often am not because I'm lazy. And to be honest with you, you don't have to have makeup at all. A lot of Lolitas really like it. It adds flair to a coordinate. A lot of them love the, the artistry of makeup. Um, and as well, it's part of the balance thing for them. They've got so much going on down here that a lot feel empty without something on their face, which is fair enough, I'm similar. I also just don't like the way my gremlin face looks in photos and videos when it doesn't have makeup on because I always look tired. So personal makeup for me. But there's lots of people who don't like makeup, who love their natural face, maybe are allergic to makeup. It's too hot where they live and they sweat it off. Whatever, whatever, whatever. They just don't want to. You do not have to wear makeup to wear Lolita. You're beautiful and whatever makes you comfortable is what you should do. Here's my next tip and this is one, it ties into what we just talked about and it's something that I am working on this year. Don't be afraid to make something ugly. <laughs> I know a lot of us obviously don't want to be ugly and you hear the word Ida and you're super afraid of being perceived as that. Who cares? When you're being creative and when you're trying something new, chances are you will make some ugly coordinates. It happens. <laughs> but experimenting and trying new things and branching out in your wardrobe is so much fun. And it's the only way to really make new coordinates that perhaps you never would have thought of. I'm doing that this year, where I'm throwing together coordinates I've never done before and hoping they work. I'm literally doing a video giving advice to new Lolitas and I'm wearing a coordinate and a dress that I've literally never worn before. This is the first time I've ever done an all white coordinate. It could have been awful. Is it my favorite thing I've ever made? No, I'll be honest. I don't think it looks bad, but it's not my favorite. But I was still willing to put it on and sit here and look like an idiot because I was excited to try something new. 
I love these butterflies in my hair. I've never done this before. I wanna braid it and stick them in. And now I know that. So make ugly coordinates. You can post them if you want. You don't have to if you don't want to. If you get dressed and you absolutely hate it and you don't want anyone to see it, don't take a picture or do and keep it just for yourself to track your progress, you know? But make ugly stuff. Be a little Ida. Join a community. Easiest way to do this is on Facebook. Look for a community in your city or if you are a smaller city or town, perhaps the next closest one that does have a community. I obviously don't know every single community that's out there because I live where I live and that's the only one I bothered to research. Now I know some people don't love going to big meetups or, or hanging out with other Lolitas. They kind of want to do this fashion as their own thing and that's fine. You can do it that way and you don't have to join a community. I just find it's a big help, especially at the start. It one, gives you an instant connection to people who either are in your same city or near you who like this niche fashion because you can feel very alone at the beginning. If you do like meetups or events, it gives you option to go ahead and join those. There they are. In the beginning, I was really afraid to go to a lot of them because I didn't have outfits that would meet the theme. These days, I'm just crazy. No, I respect the theme. It gives you people to ask advice and tips from, which is really, really helpful. People in Lolita are lovely. Are there some not nice people? For sure. But there are not nice people in every single hobby. Can't really blame Lolita for that. It gives you access to a possible swap meet, which is so helpful when you're starting out. I went to a swap meet within my first little bit of being in Lolita and managed to pick up a few things for quite a good deal. Uh, so that can happen. You can get a look at what what is out there that maybe you never knew um, and you can buy stuff without having to worry about paying shipping. And even outside of swap meets, people will often in the community's post when they're selling stuff and it's generally in your local currency too, which is helpful. You don't have to worry about any conversions. You could join these groups and never ever ever go to a meetup if that's what's best for you. But I just, I think it really does help to know that there are other people out there who love this fashion and who are, you know, going through the same stuff. So I would, I would at least find one community to join and at least participate in online, whether you go to real life stuff or not. Nervous about your first meetup? Bring a friend. There's nothing wrong with that. Matthew, my younger brother, came to my very first meetup. For that one, I did actually just check in with permission. I said, hey, you know, I've got my brother. He just comes with me to this kind of stuff. He's not a Lolita, but he's very cool. That's all right. And everybody was, was totally chill with that. Obviously, this is a sticky one if you're going somewhere that has a limited amount of seating, such as um, a high tea or maybe somebody's house. Maybe avoid those first meetups if that you want to bring somebody for comfort for the first time. But, you know, mall meetups, outdoor picnic meetups. Um, i trying to think of things we've done, like oh, hot chocolate crawl meetups, things like that that don't have a little amount of space. I really don't think it is harmful to bring somebody with you to make you comfortable. I did and then I got comfortable and I can go all by myself now, which is crazy. You know, just make sure they're not going to be nasty to the Lita's. I'm sure your friends wouldn't be, but just in case, you know, someone who's not going to judge people for what they're wearing or be weird about the Lolitas while they're there. Bring a friend, bring a sister, you know, bring a cousin, whatever, whatever. Make yourself comfortable at these meetups. Now you've been in Lolita for a little bit. Perhaps you have a couple dresses. You've been to a couple meetups, or not if you don't like meetups. But you're, you're ever expanding your wardrobe, slowly collecting things up. I recommend focusing on the little things. Dresses are so fun to buy. I love them. I want a million of them. But eventually you reach a point where you've bought nothing but dresses and you're stuck again having no coordinates to wear. <laughs> so I'm not saying buy no dresses. Do. Bring joy into your life. But make sure to keep in mind that for every dress you're buying, you may need to get wrist cuffs. Do you have white versus off-white? As soon as you have a more ivory dress, you kind of need the off-white. Don't forget about socks. Are you buying different colored shoes so you don't have to wear a white shoe with every single thing you wear? Are you getting additional head pieces? Do you have enough bags? I cannot tell you how few wrist cuffs and bags I have and it makes cording so difficult sometimes. <laughs> like when I made my cord with me and I wanted to do an all lavender outfit 
and I didn't have lavender wrist cuffs. Kind of made for a bit of a problem. So keep the small stuff in mind. Again, dresses are the best thing to buy. They're so much fun, but you do need everything to make a coordinate. Which also takes me to my tip. When buying dresses, get their matching headbutt or headpiece, whatever it happens to be. Now obviously some sets come out and they have matching everything. Headbow, dress, blouse, tights, um, jewelry, everything, everything. If you want to get that whole set, go ahead. It's going to be expensive, but if you've saved up or prepared for it, that's awesome. Um, I find you don't necessarily have to unless you really, really want to wear a full set. The best thing I have found to do is the dress and whatever its matching headpiece is. Especially when you're starting out, it can be hard to find headpieces to match um, dresses if it is a print, unless you've kind of bought a, a bunch of solid color workhorse head bows. I had this issue where they're just, I couldn't cross my bows in between outfits. If you buy the dress, with the head bow, it's usually not too much more money. The head bows, depending on where you're buying from, such as brand or maybe $20, $25 more, which I mean, is, it can be a lot, but isn't as bad as like buying an $80 blouse. <laughs> and right away, you have a dress, you have a head bow, you can put that on. It's much easier to maybe put a white or a black blouse on, depending on what your color scheme is, to put on a basic pair of socks, and then wait till you've collected up other stuff that go. But I have found I have so many more headaches trying to match a headpiece to items. And then as you sort of collect up uh, more and more head bows, you've got the ones that match your dresses, you're also buying uh, regular workhorse head bows, um, you then don't always have to wear the matching head bow, you can branch out and try different things. But it's really, really, really going to help your cords at the beginning if just right away you've got that piece that absolutely messes your, matches your dress. There's no need to mess around. You can just start thinking about your next pieces. That's why the very first dress I bought was a dress and a head bow. I was smart at the start and then I stopped being smart and stopped doing that and was like, Justine, what, what is your problem? And I went back to doing that and I have no regrets about it. I will always buy the matching headpiece if it's available. I've had a couple times where it's sold out and it's pretty salty about that. If you're gonna wear Lolita out, be ready for some dumb questions. Sometimes they're lovely questions. Sometimes people are really lovely and just ask, oh, what is this you're wearing? Or why are you all dressed up? Or being very sweet about it. Lovely to talk to them. I usually just say, oh, it's just a, you know, an out there fashion. No need to get into it. Um, some people will say dumb things, just as they do in every aspect of life. You can choose how you personally want to deal with that. I'm a bit aggressive. That's who I am. You can be nice about it. You can ignore them. But just be aware that that is probably going to happen. So if you're not super comfortable with that, maybe again, whenever you go out in Lolita, have somebody with you, or at least for the first few times, which is also why comms can be helpful because you're out with a large group and that does make it a little bit easier. People are probably going to look, people are going to scare, stare. They do it. I've had it my whole life. It's the cost of being a weirdo. <laughs> people also try and take unauthorized pictures of you, with, which ain't it. I will say something back sometimes if I'm in the mood. If I'm not, if I'm just trying to go about my life, I will just turn around and you can have a picture of my back and nothing else. If people ask you for photos, you also have every right to say no. You can say yes if you're okay with it, that's fine. Sometimes I am, I, I don't care. Um, but sometimes I also just don't want to stop and have a photo taken or I don't know what said stranger is going to do with the photo, so I simply say no. A lot of people will listen and that's great. Some people will not. They're the worst. Lolita will get you more attention than just your average outfit. That is the reality of it, unfortunately. So just be prepared for that. I'm not saying you have to be scared of it. Just be ready. It's much easier to deal with if you're kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, I knew this was coming. Another thing along the vein of people saying things at you that you don't want. You may receive some unsolicited advice if you post your cords online. And again, posting them is completely your choice. If you wanna be a Lolita who just dresses up for you and doesn't put it anywhere, that's friggin' awesome. It's definitely something I've noticed less and less, but it is still there, that some people like to give advice on what you should do for your cord, whether you've asked for it or not. 
which I don't think is acceptable. I think if somebody says advice or opinions okay, sure, go ahead, as long as they're constructive. You're not just going in and being like, you suck. That's not a constructive uh, criticism. But there are people who you've just posted your chord, you're proud of it, it's your first, maybe it's not the best chord ever on the planet, but you love it and they'll come in and say, well, you should have done this. It could happen and it likely will happen at least once or twice. Just ignore it. Honestly, people, there still seems to be a belief sometimes that Lolita is like public property, even if it's yours, which is a wild concept. Um, some people also are just trying to be helpful and are going it about, about it the wrong way. Be prepared and just brush it off. You can reply back saying, I'm actually quite happy with my cord. I'm not taking any advice at the moment. It was experimental or I was just trying this or blah, blah, or I like it. So be it. You can delete those comments. You can ignore those comments, but just be prepared that it could happen. A lot of people are not being cruel. They really are just trying to help. They're just going about it in the wrong way. But another thing to prepare yourself for when making your first posts online. Find Lolita content creators to follow. This is especially helpful if you're not a super social person and you don't want to go out to meetups or join a comm. Um, this is another way to kind of get a connection with people who are also in this fashion. You can follow, depending on what your social media is, you know, there's Instagram Lolitas, there's Lolitas who post a lot on Twitter, there's loads of YouTube Lolitas, obviously. Um, I personally love Lovely Lore on YouTube. I think she is phenomenal. That's someone I follow. I think there's even still Lolitas on Tumblr, although not as big as it used to be. <laughs> you can find them wherever you are comfortable using social media. And you don't necessarily have to post yourself, but it's nice to see other people again doing the fashion. It can help you get advice for coordinates. Maybe they have a dress that you have that you've been really struggling to come up with something to wear for and they've done something and you're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I just need a pink blouse. That's what I've been missing. Or you can go to the YouTubers who have advice like this video or other fun stuff to watch revolving around Lolita content. It's just nice to get to intake something that you really, really love because you can't always be buying Lolita, can't always be wearing Lolita, um, unless you're in lifestyle Lolita, in which case I'm very impressed by you. But it's a way to interact with other Lolita in aspects of your life without having to actually put a dress on some days, and that's very nice. Also, in mentioning it in my last one, I remember, you don't have to be a lifestyle Lolita. You don't have to wear Lolita every single day to be a Lolita. I do not. I, I work in film and I can't wear Lolita to work. That just is not gonna happen. I'd pass out with how much I gotta flatten my chest down some days and it just would be super uncomfortable. And I also just have days where I wanna wear my pajamas all day or I wanna just put on one of my nerdy t-shirts and jeans and that's fine. And I'm still a Lolita and I wear it when I want to. There are also people who do wanna wear Lolita every single day and that's okay too. You can find your comfort level and work around that. Maybe you wear it a couple times a week. Maybe you wear it once a month. Maybe you wear it for an hour every day. Whatever works best for you and brings you joy. It's your clothes, your fashion. Do what makes you happy. That was a lot of tips. And I feel like anything else I say will be branching out more into like advanced tips, which is not the point of this video. And I don't know if I consider myself advanced enough to give advanced tips. So we're gonna stop there. Again, if you have any questions that you felt sprang from this video, from something I said, or you felt that I didn't cover, totally, totally welcome to leave a comment below and I will absolutely answer that question as best I can. And if I don't know, I will simply tell you that I don't know. But I really do hope this was helpful to some people who are wanting to get into Lolita. I know it can be very daunting. It was for me when I was first starting out, I won't lie but I am very happy I went through with it. I love collecting the dresses. I love being a part of this fashion. I love the meetups. It's, I love making coordinates. It was so, so worth it. And I think if you're really into Lolita, you'll think it's worth it too. Thank you for tuning in today. I was happy I got to put out a more informational video instead of me just mucking around and being silly, although I do love those videos too, obviously. Stick around if you love Lolita content. There will absolutely be more as well as many, many other nerdy aspects of my life. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.